some kind of antibiotics to get rid of that. <laughs> All right. Good morning again. Um, it is science time. There's a kitty for Josie. Okay. Um, all right. Today we are talking about the moon. Okay. We're continuing to talk about things in space. Um, however, let me just say really quickly, just like a little bit of housekeeping on science. Last week, I was going through grading your quizzes that you took. If you took the science quiz, your grade is in there. And I responded to like where you typed done on the quiz. I put a comment on there that has your grade for the science quiz on there. And they're called a quiz, but I'm really just putting them in as like a worksheet, not like as a test grade. Um, but I am missing the quiz from four of you. I'm missing it from Grace, from Ethan, I'll have to get with Ethan down the hall. Jason and DJ, I know DJ, um, Mama said that you were going to get caught up today, hopefully. Um, but so those four people, I am missing your science quiz. I need those so that we can get the grade in the grade book. And then the science homework, hang on just a second, Jason. The science homework from last week, which was watching some videos about shadows and answering questions. There were three different videos about shadows. I'm missing that from Jason and DJ again. So again, things that need caught up on, these are grades that are going in the grade book. You don't want to miss out on these grades. It will have a terrible effect on your grade that you get for science. Um, okay, hands raised. Josie, yes ma'am. Um, so how do you see your grade for the um, science quiz? Um, I put it as a comment. So if you go into like your completed assignments in the science folder and, and just look up last week's quiz, which I think was called Earth's Rotation, and if you just look at that quiz and I put a comment on there. So you actually should get a little no notification in your seesaw, like your little inbox or whatever, because Miss Bat put a comment. And I just put your score in the comment on that. Okay. Um, Jason, your hand. Um, which science quiz? The one that's called Earth's Rotation. It's from last week. And the homework from last week. Jason, you're literally at this point missing every single thing. So if I haven't checked social studies, that's all I've got left to check. But you're missing absolutely every single thing from last week. So I don't know where you were. And if I remember correctly, I don't remember seeing you on the calls last week either. Maybe one of them. Well, so, I was on a couple of them because remember um, the baby was in it. Okay. So, but let's focus on getting your work done because that's what's going in the grade book. Okay, bud. All right, Fiona. Um, about the science, um, about the, um, the comments, where are they at in the thing? It should, it should give you any time that I put a comment over on the right hand side of your seesaw. Hang on. Let me present my screen. I need to do this anyway. Okay. I think you're about to see my screen. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, do you guys see my screen? Do you see my seesaw screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so if you guys look, you have the same thing over here, right? This says journal, activities, inbox. Okay, so where it says inbox, there might be like a little red number, little number in a red circle there. If you click on that, it should show you like, Miss Bab commented on your post. And then you can click on that and it'll give you the score. That's, right. That's where it is. I forgot. I forgot that it was okay. in there. Yeah. So it, anytime I comment on there, that's where you want to go find those comments on your posts. Um, okay. Jason, I see your hand raised. I remember that. In the, um, second. the second time I changed the, um, uh, that quiz you said sent me, it said edit. So I thought you resent it back to me. I did uh, another time this morning. I thought you resent it back for me to redo it. Again, there were still, well, again, check your comments. Guys, if I send I something back to you, always check your comments because I, if I send it back, I will always write a comment to let you know why I sent it back to you. Okay. So make sure that you check your comments in that, um, in that inbox section over here. Okay. Cause I will always let you know why I sent something back to you. If I have to send something back. Okay. 
Um, okay, so we're gonna get started today. So we are in the science book and we are on page 432. Page 432, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start reading. I know some of you don't have your book with you. That's okay. Just be a really great listener, okay? So we're talking about the moon today. How does the moon appear? On July 20th, 1969, astronaut Neil Armstrong was the first person to walk on the moon. Armstrong oh. sent this message back to Earth. Jason, yeah. Wait, which page are we on? Page 432. Okay. All right. The surface is fine and powdery, like much of the high desert in the United States. The moon has no atmosphere. Because there is no atmosphere, there are no winds, and there is no weather on the moon. There is no air to block radiation from the sun or for astronauts to breathe. Temperatures can be as high as 253 Fahrenheit and drop below negative 451 Fahrenheit. So how did Earth's visitors to the moon even survive? They wore spacesuits to protect them from the changes in temperature and from the radiation. Um, they also carried containers of oxygen to breathe. The craters on the moon's surface were made over billions of years as rocks traveling through space hit the moon. Vast plains cover other parts of the moon, and earlier astronomers called these plains maria, a Latin word meaning seas. Valleys, or rills, cut grooves in the moon's surface. In other places, mountains rise thousands of meters. So it gave us a little bit of a description of what the moon seems like when you're actually on it, but how does it appear to us on Earth? Can we see all of the little mountains and valleys and plains from here on Earth? No. Mm -mm. Josie, I see your hand raised. Um, no, you can't because um, pretty much all you see is that it's, it almost looks white on Earth, mm -hmm. but it's more of a gray, dusty, like they, um, said and it's more kind of um I would say since the craters in it we can sometimes sometimes see it but pretty much you think of whenever you draw a picture um you put like gray moon with a bunch of craters in it um if you're drawing a picture of the sky but what you really see is just like a white blob, a bright white blob. Right. So we see, you know, a white circle. And then, though, we can see some kind of gray splotches on it. And we know that those are the craters. OK, because we've been told that. But really what they look like to us is just white with some gray spots. Right. Um, OK. But sometimes the Earth or the Earth. The moon, like this morning when I woke up, I'm sure you guys were not out and about at 6.30, 7 o'clock this morning. Um, I'm sure you guys are still snoozing. Um, but if you happened to be outside last night or first thing this morning while it was still dark outside, you would have seen a full moon. Um, and that meant that we saw the entire circle of the moon and it was all white, right? Or actually kind of a kind of yellowy orange a little bit last night and this morning. Um, but we saw the entire moon, but sometimes we only see like a little crescent of it, right? And sometimes we see maybe like half of it. So what causes these, okay? So from Earth, you can only see parts of the moon's surface that are lit by sunlight. If you looked at the moon from outer space, you would see that the side of the moon that faces the sun is always lit by sunlight. As the moon revolves around Earth, Different amounts of light reflect from the moon's surface, and the moon appears to change shape. During a full moon phase, an observer on Earth can see the entire half of the moon that is lit by sunlight. During a new moon phase, the lit side of the moon is facing away from an observer on Earth. A phase of the moon is the appearance and shape of the moon as you see it at a particular time. Okay, so this is an important vocabulary word that you're going to want to remember. I see Josie grabbing her notebook. She's like, yep, I'm going to write it down. Um, so if you have your science notebook handy, um, phase is a word you're going to want to remember. That is one of the vocabulary words that's going to be on this week's quiz. Okay, so I can tell you that now, um, but you want to know the word phase. Okay, I see several of you popping up to go grab your science journal. Good. Thank you.
I'm going to make myself a note to add that on there, okay? All right. So the phase is what the appearance and shape of the moon is at a particular time. So like I said, last night was a full moon. That was the phase that it was in, it was in a full moon phase. But depending on a couple weeks from now, it will probably look like only half of it. Um, sometimes it's a new moon where we barely, barely, barely really see it at all. Maybe we can just kind of tell it's there, but it's mostly dark, right? So phase is the appearance and shape of the moon as you see it at a particular time. I'm going to repeat it one more time for Fiona because I know she didn't have her book to copy it down right now. Um, but when you get home tonight, Fiona, definitely you can copy it down as well. It's on page 432 if you want to jot that down. Um, and the word is phase, P-H-A-S-E. Um, the appearance and shape of the moon as you see it at a particular time. Okay. So the phase depends on the location of the moon in relation to the earth and the sun. Um, the time of one phase of the moon until the next time of the moon is about 29 and a half days. So then if you have your book, you see pictures of the phases of the moon. But because not everybody has their book, give me just a second. I want to... What is that? Da, 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 da. Okay, we'll use this one. I think hopefully. Okay. So if you guys look at this picture here, and this is kind of similar to the one in the book, except the one in the book has it facing the other way. Okay. So we can see in this diagram that the sun is over here and it's shining this way. And here we are on earth. Okay. So what we see standing on earth um, in this phase would be a new moon. The sun is actually lighting the back side of the moon. So there always is a part of the moon that is lit up. We just can't always see that lit up side. So on a new moon, the moon looks dark in the sky to us. We can't really see any white on it. Sometimes we can still tell it's there. It almost looks like a shadowy version of it, right? Um, but that's why, um, because the sun is actually behind it and it's exactly in between us, okay? Mm -hmm. So as it starts moving around and orbiting, because the moon orbits around us. So you can see this green line here shows that the moon is going around the earth, okay? Just like we go around the sun, the moon goes around us and orbits around us, okay? So as the moon comes over around us, it's still lighting the back half, but we from Earth are actually able to see a little sliver. So you can see this white part that's lit up here. We actually can see that sliver from Earth, and what that starts to look like is this picture B here. Okay, so B here. This is what we actually see. So we can see that that sunlight that's right on the edge there that's reflecting the sun is starting to kind of show up as that crescent little shape right there. And then as the moon continues to orbit around, we see that it's completely lit like halfway. Okay. And we call that phase first quarter. Um, you guys are seeing my screen, right? With the diagram. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay. So then from here, what we would see is that half of it is lit up and half of it is dark. And we call that one the first quarter phase. Miss Beth. As moon, yeah. Um, uh, go ahead again. Wait, no. The um the whaling moon is actually um the moon off of DreamWorks. Yes, it does look like that. Okay, so as the moon continues to go, we're starting to see more and more of it lit up. You can kind of tell it started as this waxing crescent shape here and it's just barely and then the sun is creeping across we're halfway then it um when it's here at this point d um it's almost all the way on the opposite side of us now we can see most of it lit up but there's still a little bit of a dark edge over here that we can't see 
fully. And this is called gibbous. Okay. When most of the moon is lit up and there's only a little bit that we can't see, we call that this gibbous word here. And then as it continues to move, once it gets all the way on this side, the sun is shining all the way fully on it. So we can see the entire moon lit up. And that's actually what happened last night and then early this morning, if you could see it then. Okay. But then the moon continues its orbit around and then it starts going back towards the darkness again. So then we start losing some of that sunlight on it. So we're back to a gibbous, which means most of it's lit up, but not all of it. Okay. And this one's called waning gibbous. As it starts to go from light to dark, we see the word waning in the phase name, waning gibbous. So it's losing its sunlight, and but it's still mostly lit up. Then we see this called last quarter, which is when it's right here beside us. We see half of it lit up and half of it dark. Um, and now it is, then it goes to H, which is the waning crescent. Again, waning means that it's becoming more dark and the crescent because we can only see a teeny little portion of it lit up because that's here. We're looking at it from this angle here. So it's mostly dark, but we see this teeny little bit of light right on the edge, okay? And then when it gets right back in between us and the sun, we are back to that new moon where really we just see the kind of shadow and the outline of it. And we really don't see the moon lit up at all because what's lit up is actually facing the sun and facing completely away from us, okay? It takes 20, about 28, 29 days for the moon to make it one full orbit around us. About so, a month? About a month. I was wondering if anybody would pick up on that. Yeah, so it takes about a month for the moon to orbit around the earth. So that's kind of an interesting thing you talked about um, that you just brought up that it, it the phases of the moon take a full month because now we're going to flip over to our mystery science video and um, I think Doug is going to have something to say about that. Oh, Hi, wait. it's Doug. Did you guys have any? I don't, I can't see you guys right now. Didn't you? Fiona, I see your hand. Um, you were saying that the moon was kind of orange-ish last mm -hmm. night. Um, uh -huh. How did you do that? That we're actually going to talk about in our book here in just a little bit after we watch Mystery Science. But it has to do with the way the sun reflects off of our atmosphere, off of Earth's atmosphere. And it kind yeah. of gives the moon a little bit of a tint. Um, sometimes kind of yellowy, sometimes kind of orangey. Um, there are even times called a blood moon where the moon even looks almost reddish. Um, yeah. Josie, I see your hand raised, babe. Josie's got her frozen thing going on again. Isn't, isn't she always frozen? Wait, she's unfrozen. All right, Josie, we think you're unfrozen. She's still frozen. Except, yeah, we see you moving, sort of, but it's like all gibberish. Okay. Either type it, Josie, or disconnect, reconnect. I'm going to flip over and we're going to start mystery science and go from there let me see if i can pull this out over here that way i can still see you guys okay here we go the moon isn't it great of all the things in the sky the moon has to be the most familiar it's probably one of the first things you notice about the world it's usually a word that little kids learn in their first year of speaking Ask your parents. I'll bet you were excited pointing at the moon when you were just a little toddler. Since you've known the moon your whole life, it's really easy to take for granted. It's just kind of there at night, right? It's just a big, bright nightlight in the sky. But it's really not just a nightlight. The moon is a whole world circling over your head each night. It's full of surprises and mysteries. Like, why can we sometimes see it during the day? And where does the moon come from? And what's the moon made out of? Some of these are mysteries scientists have solved, and others they're still not completely sure yet. Here's a mystery you can notice every night. Sometimes the moon looks like this, nice and round, a full moon we call it. But sometimes it looks totally different, like this, 
or this, or even this. None of these are completely round like the full moon. All these different shapes are what we call the phases of the moon. Wow. What's Jeez. going on with all these shapes? Why does this happen? This is the mystery you'll solve today. Why doesn't the moon always look round? Why does it seem to change shape? Do you have any ideas? Before you just guess, be scientific about this. Ideally, you would spend some time outside actually observing the moon, making a note of its phase each night to get as much information as you can. What you'd want to see is how often does the moon change phases? Every night? Every week? What exactly is going on from night to night? Now, for convenience, I took a photo of the moon every night for a month, which you can look through now. You'll see a photo I took with my camera right here. And in the background is what I saw with just my eyes, standing there looking at the moon in the sky. Are you ready? Pay attention to both, the close-up of what the moon looked like each night and where it was located in the sky. Okay, here we go. So this one is really, really, really hard to see. I'm going to help you. In fact, I didn't even see it. The moon is actually here in the picture. Can you see that little sliver just barely right where my arrow is pointing? Okay. So that's where the moon is right now. And we can see the sun's right there and it's shining. And we're getting a little sliver of the moon. And now it's here. What are you noticing about the moon? Fiona, what are you noticing? Oh, unmute. Fiona, unmute. Forget that a lot. Um, as the sun goes down and the moon comes up, the sun starts making the moon get brighter. But um, as it goes around, it starts to shine on the moon even more and make okay. the moon appear. So this is all taken at the exact same time every morning, but just different nights. So this is night six at whatever time this is. This is as the sun is setting. Um, he's taking this picture. And so this is the sixth night. This is the seventh night, eighth night. It's exactly a half moon. So we can tell that the white part, the shiny, the part that's reflecting the sun is getting larger, correct? What else are you noticing about it as it's going across the sky? Fiona. As it's going across the sky, it's slowly going down each night. Okay, so it kind of grows and then it's coming back down and almost no, like an arc. It starts over here, then it goes all the way around and then goes back down. Okay. All right. Some people have wondered if the reason the moon has different phases is because the moon itself might actually be changing shape. But if you look carefully at the real moon, you can usually see that the rest of the moon is still there. You see that? So the moon is always a sphere. It never actually changes shape. So then why does the moon have phases? When you look at the photos I took of the moon each evening, hopefully you know a couple clues. The first thing you probably noticed is that the phases go in order. When you observed, you saw a pattern, a very certain order. It's not like one night the moon was this shape, and then the next night it was this shape, and then back to this shape, and then this shape. No, that didn't happen. Instead, it always went like this, starting with the crescent moon, and each evening as I came out to look, the moon had gotten a little bit bigger, eventually becoming the half moon phase, then the phase we call gibbous, and finally, after about two weeks, a full moon. The second thing you might have noticed is that even though I went out to it at the same time each night, the moon wasn't always in the same place. As the moon's phase was growing, it was getting farther and farther away from the sun in the sky each night. Hmm. So notice that the phases seem to have something to do with the sun. When the moon looks close to the sun in the sky, it's a thin crescent. And when the moon looks far away from the sun in the sky, it's a full moon. Cam, I see your hand raised. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. I figured it out. So the reason that the moon's out during the day is because it starts and then it just keeps going. 
And whenever it's not there, we have no moon. But whenever it's full moon or like a crescent or a gibbous, we have moon. So it just keeps moving. We and then it makes it just keeps moving. And that's why. Right. So the moon is orbiting around us all the time, just like we are orbiting around the sun. Sometimes we can still see it at daytime because it's still making its path around us and because of where we are in our revolution around our axis and where it is. So let's see here. Um, water bottle is the earth. This is a very terribly shaped earth, um, but my globe is way over on the other side of the room, so I'm not going to run over there and get it. But then I've got my moon, right? So the moon is going around us. And if, let's see, you guys are the sun. Okay, so right now I'm smack dab in between. The moon is in between us and the sun. This would be a new moon um, for me here on Earth because I'm seeing a darkness. You, you being the sun are getting the light. Um, so it might still be daytime. I'm facing the sun, right? So here on Earth, here I am. I'm facing the sun. It's daytime. And the moon is still in its orbit over here. So I can still see the moon during the daytime. I just am seeing um, just a part of it, right? I'm only able to see a crescent of it. And then I'm turning, and then as it becomes nighttime, um, we get to see where the moon is shining um, a lot easier than in the daytime. There's only one phase of the moon where you cannot see it during the day. All of the other phases of the moon you can sometimes see during the day. Lucas, I see your hand raised. Um, so, like, when it, like, goes, starts heading to full moon, maybe, like, mm -hmm. the moon travel to the other side of the planet, and then, like, the different time zones get night, and then we get sun. Okay, yeah, so, when the moon, it only takes a month, every month. It takes one month and then the moon starts over. One month and then the moon starts over. It takes us a year to go around the sun, but it only takes the moon a month to go around us. So Lucas just brought up the full moon and full moon is the one time of month that we cannot see the sun during, or sorry, see the moon during the day. And the reason is because if... I may have to go grab my globe. Hang on. Unspeakable. I can still hear you guys. Okay. Let's see here. Got my globe. I'm going to change the camera a little bit. I'm really close on top of you guys. Okay. So you guys can see my globe, right? Okay. And then I've got... I'm frozen? Yeah. No. Not my no. Okay. You're frozen like this. Okay. Well, Jace, it's just you. Let me keep going, and you can watch the playback if you need to, okay? All right. So I've got my globe. You guys can see the globe. And hang on. Let me stop presenting, and you can see me. Okay. You guys see the globe, right? Yeah. And if you are the sun, okay? So you're the sun shining down on Earth right now. Here, let's put us forward. Here we are. Um, here's the United States. And so the sun is shining. It's daytime in the United States. Remember, the full moon, actually, when we see the full moon is when we're on the back side because the sun is shining this way. So for me to see the full moon, the sun's getting the full rays this way. It's peeking over. The sun's rays are shining past the earth and lighting the moon over here. But if I, the moon is full over here, but I in Missouri am facing the sun. So can I see the full moon shining back here? I'm facing the entirely wrong way. Does that make sense? We're facing the sun. It's daytime. The full moon is back here. Who can see the full moon right now? Is there anybody that can see a full moon right now anywhere on earth? I don't see your hands raised, so somebody just shout because I have myself pinned on the screen. Um, I wait. can. I know. I know. Who, who, who? Me. Yeah. 
Okay, go. What's my answer? Uh, the people who can see a full moon right now would be the other people on the other side of the Earth. Yeah, the people over here, it's China. The people in China, it's nighttime for them because they're facing away from the sun right now. What they can see is the full moon that's reflecting from the sun coming this way. Does that make sense? So you're the sun shining this way. The full moon is back here because it's getting all of the light of the sun. But for us, it's daytime. So can does that make sense that we can't ever see a full moon during the day? Because yeah. during the day, we're facing the sunshine. But for a full moon, it's over here. Okay. Now, a new moon is when the sun, the moon is in between us and the sunshine, which is you guys. So as the sun's shining, the sun is hitting the back side of the moon. On this side, we're looking, we see the darkness of the moon. Okay. So just a little illustration to help you see that um, all of the phases can be seen during the day sometimes, except for the full moon, just because for a full moon to happen, the moon is behind us behind the earth and if we're facing the sun for daytime we can't see the other side of the earth okay so that's that all right let me go back to mystery doug now all right here we go okay here we go hmm keep in mind that the sun is like the light bulb of our solar system. It's what lights up the Earth, and it's what lights up the moon, too. Using a light bulb in a dark room, you can actually create the effect of a moon phase on any ball-shaped object. Like, this is a picture I took of an orange. So here you see, I guess we'd call it full orange. But now, here I made it a crescent orange. Or here's some guy named Dave. Hey, Dave. And crescent Dave. So you can see how using an orange or any round object, it should be possible to figure out how to make the moon's phases right there in your classroom. You're going to get the supplies to do this in just a minute. Before you do, though, notice one last hint from your observations. Did you notice how over the course of the evenings, the moon seemed to move in an arc across the sky? It's like a section of a circle. Maybe you have heard the idea of an orbit, that the moon goes in a circle around the Earth once each month. Is this anything to do with why we see moon phases? Let's call this clue number three, that the moon goes in an orbit around the Earth. In the next video, you're going to get a bright light to use as a model of the sun and a ball to use as a model of the moon. So given all the clues you've seen now, see if you can figure out how to make a model that shows the moon's phases. Spend a few moments now thinking of some ideas you might try out. Okay. So I did not have, we didn't even have enough supplies to really do this in the classroom very well. But what I can tell you is just like he said, it doesn't have to be, they, they told us to get styrofoam balls and sticks and create a little thing like he just showed. You can get any round shaped thing in your house and then find a lamp or a light bulb and then you can go in a dark room and create this okay you don't need to do it now i'm going to click through it they're going to give us an example of it um if you want to do this on your own later you can um yes ma'am josie um uh, well just got on and i'm on my parents computer not on mine and I'm going to see if it can work, and it's working right now, but um, I don't know what happened at all. Okay, because but I would say, um, really, I was just giving an example of when the full moon and you can't see the full moon during the daytime. You'll want to mm -hmm. go back and watch the video when I record that if you missed that part. Other than um, that, I just started. Will you be able to record it? Yeah, it's, I've got it recording right now, so I'll post it later. So you can just fast forward to that part and watch that little section again that you missed because I don't know exactly when you got off. Um, but um, Doug just was about to introduce the activity, but like I said, some of, somebody's going crazy. Um, if you want to try this, it's really easy. You just need a flashlight, which I'm sure your parents' cell phone has a flashlight. 
um, or you might have a, just a regular flashlight around your house somewhere. And then you need anything round. It can be any ball at all. Um, and um, you can do this at home. But for now, Doug's going to give us an example in the video so we don't have to act it out. We're just going to watch it, okay? In this activity, we're going to create a model of the moon's orbit to see if this can explain why the phases change. I did this activity with a partner, and I made sure the room was as dark as possible. The darker you can get the room, the better the activity is going to work. Here are the supplies you'll need. A smooth styrofoam ball, a wooden stick, such as a skewer, and a bright flashlight. When you're done with this step, press the arrow on the right. Okay, you also don't need to have a ball that you stab. You do not have to hold your ball on a stick. You can just hold the ball very still like, like this and it will work, okay? That would be fine. Are you ready? Yeah. What's the other thing? That silver thing? What silver thing? The silver thing that he was holding as well? They, this person has a flashlight, and this person has a stick with a ball on it. And you just, the flashlight. Flashlight. you just need a flashlight and a ball. Somebody needs to mute, though. Miss Bab, it was like, um, it looked like a hose nozzle. It was a flashlight, babe. It was just the kind of flashlight uh, they had. You need a flashlight and a ball. That is it. In the video, he has his stabbed on a stick so that he can hold it kind of up. You don't have to do that. You can just use your arm and hold it up. Okay? So, that's that. So, we have this idea that what could explain the changing phases of the moon was that the moon is going in an orbit around the Earth. We built a model to see what that would look like, and it works. Did you see the phases of the moon change? Here's what I saw. Okay, you see it's a waxing crescent. It's getting larger. It's getting larger. It's at about almost the first quarter or a half moon. Now it's a gibbous, waxing gibbous, and he's just about all the way through full moon. And now, oh, it's getting smaller again. Now we're at waning gibbous, last quarter, waxing crescent, and now we're at new moon. Okay, now Lucas, did you see it? Could you see when it a little bit? That's a growing crescent. And look, here's the real moon phase compared. It's pretty good, yeah. huh? So when the moon got here, oh, we saw this, a half moon. And here's the real half moon compared. When the moon got to here, now with the light directly behind you, you got a full moon. And for comparison, here's a real full moon. But all of that is only half an orbit, so what did we see as we brought the moon around the rest of the circle? What we saw is that the phases now start to shrink down from full, down to half, down to crescent, and then a smaller crescent. So in the days after a full moon, the moon is now going through a series of shrinking phases instead of growing phases. It's moving more and more in the direction of the sun. So, Lucas, I'm watching what you're doing. You've got your flashlight and your moon in front of you, so you're probably mostly seeing like a half moon right now. So what you want to do is pretend that you're the Earth and that the moon is orbiting around you. So you would have to have somebody else hold the flashlight to really do this experiment correctly um, or at least like set your flashlight on a shelf or something so that it stays in one place, like the sun stays in one place. And then you, your face basically is the earth and you're going to turn your body so that you can just stare at the ball as you spin. And as you spin around, then you should see that the moon is changing its phases um, as you spin around um, that revolution, okay? Oops. And you see there's the sun back there. What happens next? Now that the phase of the moon has shrunk into this tiny crescent and the moon is almost in the exact direction of the sun, what happens next? This is what happens. You don't see the moon at all. Well, okay, maybe you see the tiniest sliver in this activity. But in real life, the sun is so bright in our sky, it'd be really hard to see this tiny sliver of moon given the glare of the sunlight. The sun is still shining on the moon, 
But think about it. The side of the moon that we're seeing is dark. We have a special name for this phase. It's tempting to think maybe we call it the no moon or the nothing moon. Those would actually be really good names. But we call this the new moon because it's when the whole cycle is about to start over again. How long did this whole cycle take? Well, how long did the first half of the orbit take? If you look at your moon journal, you can see it takes about 14 days to go from new moon to full moon. Those were the growing phases. It's going to take another 14 days for all the shrinking phases to happen, to go from full moon to new moon. So we can see the moon is going in an orbit around the Earth. And it's doing this over the course of about 28 days. A cycle that repeats every 28 days. That'd make a really nice unit of timekeeping. A unit that's not as long as a year, but not as short as a day. And it's also really easy to keep track of. All you have to do is just watch the moon phases. You could almost imagine saying to someone, I'll see you at the next full moon. I'll see you one moon from now. Is this ringing any bells? We do have a unit of timekeeping based on the moon cycles. It's the month. The word month is related to the word moon. In fact, a long time ago, it used to be pronounced moonth, but the vowel sound has changed over time. And so you might not have suspected any connection between those two words. How many moon cycles are there in a year? How many moons in a year? About 12. That's why there are 12 months in the calendar. But the 28 days of a moon cycle don't divide evenly into the number 365, the number of days in a year. And so we've had to add some days to each of the months in order to make our calendar work. That's why most months have slightly more than 28 days. All right, we're going to keep going here. Okay, so we're going to go back. So what I will tell you about the moon phases. There's a picture of them in your textbook if you have them. If not, I am going to post um, probably this picture if I can. Um, I'm going to post this picture um, and attach it to this lesson because you will want to study this and know this because what I can tell you is that for the quiz this week, you need to know and be able to label the phases of the moon. So you will want to practice this, learning this, okay? Somebody needs to mute. Um, new moon. And then the word we use when the white part, the sunny part is, okay, who needs to mute? Jason, can you mute, babe? Okay. So as that part that's reflecting from the sun, is it not Jason? Who is needing to mute somebody? Okay. Um, okay. Why the second I flip back over here is they're still talking. Guys, please mute and be respectful. Um, okay. New moon. Waxing is the word we see as that shiny part of the moon. The white part of the moon starts getting bigger. We see the word waxing. So waxing crescent. The crescent is that little tiny shape that we see um, right over here. And waxing means that it's going to be getting bigger. So we see that the crescent has gotten bigger and bigger, and now it's at first quarter. It seems like it should be called first half. Quarter means four, but it's clearly divided in half, not in four. Don't ask me, um, but it's called the first quarter, okay? And then that part reflected by the sun is still getting bigger, so we're still using the word waxing because it's getting bigger. And now because most of the moon is filled in, we call it gibbous. Then we get to the full moon. And then once we pass that full moon, we're halfway around, we're heading back towards the sun, it's going to start getting darker again. So the word for getting darker is waning. So as the moon is starting to get darker, we're waning and gibbous. Gibbous, again, is when most of the moon is still lit up. Then we have last quarter. Again, this looks like it should be called a half moon, um, but it is the last quarter. You got first quarter and then last quarter. And in a waning crescent, it's getting smaller, but it's that crescent shape there. And then we're back to new moon and the cycle starts all over again. It's a whole nother month, okay? So you will need to have these memorized in order um, for your quiz this week. I highly suggest you maybe copy it down in your journal, um, but I will post this little picture 
um, with the live video as well so that you have that to study, okay? Um, all right. Couple other things I want to go over before we get off. Um, I want to go about 10 more minutes, if that. Um, and just really quickly talk about eclipses and the tides, because those things also depend on the moon. Josie, yes, ma'am. Um, so have we done the, um, in our science book yet? Have we read um, the rest of the science book pages? Uh, not yet. We're not ready. Right Okay. So, okay. Now I'm back in the science book and I'm on page 434. If you want to follow along in the science book, I'm on page 434. What causes eclipses? So what is happening when a dark shadow moves in front of the sun or when the moon dims or changes color? These events are called eclipses. An eclipse occurs when one object moves in front of another object in space. We know all about that because, what, three years ago, there was a huge event here, solar eclipse, and people came from all over um, to see the solar eclipse, and it, the moon moved in front of the sun, and it turned pitch black for a few minutes, and then it was the middle of the day again, right? You guys remember that a couple years ago when that happened and we had the big solar eclipse? We made, like, paper plates or shoe boxes to look through it and see it. Yeah. Um, very sweet. Yeah. How many years does it take for you to get the solar eclipse? Um, th there's no, I don't know that there's a set number of years between solar eclipses. Kane is like really ready to wait. Okay, Kane, go for it. Scientists are guessing it's about 100 years or so between each solar eclipse. It is not. There's going to be another one uh, next year. Really? Um, it just, yes, it just depends on where on earth you're at. Um, de depends, okay? So if you think about it, um, and I really wish, if for those of you that have your textbook, you can kind of see it um, here. Um, here's what I want to do. I'm going to record a video for this next part for you guys because I want you guys to be able to see my book and me point at what's going on, and you guys won't be able to see that right now. Um, I don't think I can get that on the screen that quick. Let's see if I can. I don't think it's going to work, but I'm going to try and put this on the screen super fast for you guys. Possibly, maybe, if this picture would hurry up and flip. Okay, so on a solar eclipse, that's when the moon passes between the sun and the earth. Um, and when that happens, the moon casts a shadow on the earth, and the people can see us on earth. We can see darkness moving across the sun. Um, the solar eclipse only happens during a new moon phase. But let's think about that. We have a new moon every month. So why aren't we having a solar eclipse every month? Grayson's like, I don't know. Um, Fiona, why wouldn't we have an eclipse every month? Why do you think? Unmute, unmute, unmute. I forget that every time. Um, the only reason why we don't have a um, um, solar eclipse every month is because when the new moon comes is when it's um, nighttime. So it wouldn't make a solar eclipse. Nope. The new moon can happen during the day, too. Really? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So now what? Now what do you guys think? Jason, what do you think? I, I was going to say, now Fiona has short-term memory loss and short-term question loss. When is she going to no. stop? Okay, Jason, are you answering the question yes or no? No? no. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm trying to send this picture. It's being difficult. Um, okay. Two bab, two bab, a. There I am. Okay. Send it. Okay. Um, oh. I'm trying to get my. Okay. It's going to take a second to come through, probably. Okay. So the reason why. 
is because the moon's orbit is not exactly perfect every time. So sometimes when the moon comes around, it's kind of up here. Sometimes when it comes around, it's a little here. Just like the Earth's orbit is not a perfect circle, the moon's orbit is not either. So it's not always in exactly that same exact lined up place where it's in a perfect straight line, sun, moon, earth, okay? So it takes it a certain way time to get perfectly lined up so that the moon, the sun, and the earth are all in a perfect straight line. That's when it gets to be the eclipse, okay? Um, there's two kinds of eclipses. We also have something called a lunar eclipse. Um, and a lunar eclipse is when the moon moves into the Earth's shadow and is no longer reached by direct sunlight. So this happens when the Earth is in between the sun and the moon. And they can only happen during a full moon phase. Okay. Um, okay. So let me see if this picture popped up real quick. It's going to drive me nuts. Yes. What is it called when the moon is red? A blood moon. Blood and, moon. But, yeah. Oh. So... I thought it was called a binary moon. Mm -mm. Okay, blood moon. So eclipses might be full eclipses, total eclipses, or they might just be um, partial eclipses. And the reason is it's not going to give me this picture in time. That's a bummer. So, but if you have your um, textbook, look at the picture on page 434. Um, and you can see that it shows a picture of the sun. Let me see if I can maybe get this up here for you guys. Uh, okay. It shows a picture of the sun. And you can see that the moon is in between the sun and the earth. And it's in this perfect line, right? Well, let's say you see that it shows like a gray little triangle in between the moon and the earth. That is called the umbra. And that is where that little gray triangle where it's pointing. If you were standing on Earth where that little triangle point is, that's where you would see the total eclipse. Okay. The moon would be completely blocking the sun 100%. You would not see the sun. However, if you look at where that's pointing right now, it's pointing in the middle of the ocean. Right. So this time as the moon's passing by, there is a total eclipse. But you would have to be standing in the middle of the ocean to see the total eclipse. Okay, does that make sense? But if I were slightly, where is my finger? Slightly north of where the umbra was pointing, I could still see part of the eclipse, but not total. I could still see part of the sun, but I would see that part of the sun is blocked by the moon. Okay, so the pre-umbra, or penumbra, I'm sorry, is the light gray that you see on either side. And if you're in that area, you can still see a partial eclipse, just not the entire thing. So you would still see that the moon is blocking part of the sun, just not all of it. So almost a, a huge chunk of the earth can at least see a partial eclipse at this point. Um, but you can only see the total eclipse if you're right where that little line points, because that's the exact perfect line where the sun, the moon, and the earth line up. Now, does that kind of help illustrate and make sense a little bit about the solar eclipse? Okay. Um, you want to know the definition of solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Those are other words that you're going to need to know for this week's quiz. Um, and then um, the tide. The tides are the pull of gravity between the earth and the moon. We talked about how each planet and each moon has its own gravity. Well, the pull of the Earth and the Moon on each other is what actually causes the tides, which is the rise and fall of the ocean surface, okay? So the gravity pulling on the Earth and the Earth pulling back on the Moon causes the water in the ocean to slightly rise and slightly fall based on the gravity trying to pull it away and then pull it back down, okay? So the final word you need to know is tides. And that's on page 436 in your book. I'm going to let you guys read through that on your own. Um, DJ, do you have your book with you or did you leave it at home? I have it with me. Score. Okay. So then everybody has access to the science book. You can read the page on tides on your own. I'm not going to post the quiz until probably Monday 
because I want you guys to have more than enough time to study these vocabulary words and the um, and memorize the phases of the moon in order. Okay, um, Josie. So pretty much all I should do is just um, watch back a little bit of it. Yeah, you'll just want to fast forward until right. you get to the point where you missed out and then until the point you get back on. And then, um, yeah, so then your guys' job, read through the page on Tides. It's page 436 on your own. Make sure you understand that. Your vocabulary words you're going to need to know this week are phase, which is the appearance of the moon at a specific time. Solar eclipse, which is when the moon blocks the sun. Lunar eclipse, when the earth blocks the moon and tide, which is the rise and fall of the ocean's surface, okay? And then memorize the phases of the moon in order. I'm gonna post those, and they're also pictured in your book on page 433, okay? All right, Jason, yes, sir. I see your hand raised. Um, so, which, what do you mean by the tide? Which one, what tide, what tide? The tide, and I don't know if you've ever been to the ocean before, but the tide is, the ocean sometimes rises a little bit. Um, so if I were standing on the beach, it's too bad DJ can't just go stand on the beach and show us the tide right now. Um, but uh, if DJ were to walk out down to the beach right now, and he stood there and he didn't move. I hope he puts on a lot of sunscreen because we don't want him to get burnt. But we're just like, DJ, stand in this exact spot. And maybe he's standing in a spot and he's like five feet from where the ocean is, okay? And you know, like you've at least seen movies and stuff where the ocean is constantly having waves that come in and go back out and come in and go back out, right? So the waves are just constantly yeah. coming. Here's DJ. He's standing about this far from where the ocean waves are. But if DJ just stood there, for like five hours and didn't move, eventually the water's gonna keep getting closer and closer to him. The waves are just gonna get closer and closer and closer. And it might get to where their waves are kind of speed a little bit. And then it's gonna get even deeper. It's gonna go past him. And maybe by tonight, the it's back here and it's already like up to DJ's chest. He's like, whoa. Can I please move now, Miss Bab? I'm going to drown. The ocean is getting really deep. Please, Miss Bab. And then eventually, I change, and the ocean will go back out. And thank goodness, DJ's okay. Um, and eventually, the waters will go back down. He's really wet. He's really hungry. He's really tired. Um, but now the waters are gone back out. So that's the time. And what causes that is because the moon's gravity is actually pulling. And so it's pulling the waves back in. But then as we turn away from the moon, the waters go back out to sea. Okay. So as we start facing the moon, the moon's gravity starts pulling, which pulls the waves inland towards DJ. But then as the earth rotates around and rotates further away from facing the moon, then the waves go back out. The, gravi the pull of gravity from the moon gets lesser. Does that make sense? Does that yeah. help answer your question? Jason. DJ, are you okay uh, now? <laughs> and, uh, I wanted to say about that one sunburn thing you said, I already have a sunburn. No, DJ. Uh, we the towel, and then we forgot to put sunblock on. It was like midday, like a, a day or two ago. And we were like, oh, we're fine. And then I came up and I had a sunburn. I think it might be second degree because my shoulder, we put owl on it. This shoulder is perfectly fine now. But this shoulder burnt when I put it on, and it still burns. It still hurts. Ouch. Yeah. I'm so sorry, dear. Um, but you didn't drown in a tide, so that's good. Um, <laughs> Fiona, Fiona, I see your hand raised. Um, so what page is the tide on? Well, which page? Hey, I, I did 436. Yep. 436. Oh. I'm on that page. That I was just confused if there's like a chapter about it. No, it's just one page. Fiona, yes, ma'am. I see your hand. Um, about the sunscreen thing. Um, one time I was at the lake over Lake in Brooklyn, and I didn't put sunscreen on the first day, and I didn't get burned at all. But the second day, I put sunscreen on, and my face got fried. Ouch. 
That doesn't make sense. That's not fair. The day you put sunscreen on is the day you got room. Yeah. But then the second the before I didn't get one, they just put it on. Somebody is, hey, Jason, quit moving your computer around. It's too noisy, baby. Okay. Okay. All right. So this was an extremely long call. Thank you for being patient, friends. Um, lots and lots of information. So what I would suggest, look back through your chapter, pages 432 all the way through 436. Look through that again. Know those vocabulary words and know the moon phases. Um, be working on those. Um, and then you'll be ready for your quiz, okay? And you'll have a little homework assignment that comes up on Monday, too, okay? Um, it's only a half hour until we start our math meeting, okay? So you don't have noon. So at noon, we're going to do math. I think you guys are going to think this is an easy lesson. I hope the in-person kids thought this was an easy lesson on Monday, okay? So hopefully you guys think so, too, so we'll be able to kind of get through it pretty quickly. Cam, yes, ma'am, I see your hand raised. You're muted. You're muted. Don't I have to go through our chapters again and writing stuff down. We don't have any rest of this assignment, correct? There's, There's no other assignment for today with science other than just the study. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got through everything we needed to get through. Or if you wanted to try and recreate the little flashlight with the phases thing, you could do that if you wanted to. Um, yeah. Josie, yes, ma'am, I see your hand raised. Um, so there's, I don't even know what I'm gonna ask, never mind. Uh-oh, Fiona's uh, short-term question loss strikes again. Okay, I'm gonna go off so that we can all go like grab some lunch real quick before we get back. Short-term memory loss, I'm hanging up, go eat some lunch, go get a snack, and we'll be back in a half hour for math, okay? Okay. All right. Bye. Bye.